Hey everyone, I'm author Mary Mancusi and I'm so excited to bring you the very first episode of The Ones in Future Writers Club. All right, you guys, are you ready to write? I am so, so thrilled about this. I have wanted to do this forever, and now I'm finally getting my act together and creating this web series. I hope you um, watch the introduction and know a little bit about what we're going to do so we can just kind of dive right in now. And what we're going to talk about on this first episode is getting started, right? I mean, that makes sense. We're just getting started. And I think a lot of people are very intimidated about starting a writing project. Now, we could be talking about a short story or an entire novel or a poem or whatever it is that getting started is the hardest part because this is what they give you when they say to start writing I mean it's a blank page there's literally nothing on it and they expect you to do something awesome with it and it can be very intimidating for people I mean you have to take what's in here and get it on there somehow and that can be really tough to do that first sentence can be the hardest part of writing an entire book. I promise you, even after I've written 25 books, coming up with a first sentence is always the hardest part. So I am going to give you tips and tricks that will get you started, that will get you motivated to get that hard first part out of the way and really start uh, cranking on that book. But first, here's our geek thing of the day. I am really excited about this one. It is a little potion light. I got it from Think Geek. Uh, they opened a brick and mortar store in the Austin Mall, and that is super dangerous for my wallet because uh, <laughs> I am probably gonna spend a ton of money there. But how could I resist this? It's so cool. It's a lamp. It changes color as you touch it. Um, who wouldn't want something this awesome in their office? I saw it and I had to have it. So that is the uh, geek thing of the day. I display it very proudly right there. All right, so now let's get back to writing. Um, one of the first things I want to talk about is making time to write. Um, I know it sounds very simple, but if you don't make time to write, you will not write. There is only one secret to publication, and that is button chair, hands on keyboard. If you are not writing, you will never be a writer. And I can, can't tell you how many people in my life have come up to me and been like, someday when I have time, I'm going to be a writer. I'm going to write a book. And I look at them, and I don't want to say this out loud, obviously, because it's super rude, but I'm going to be like, you will never be a writer because you will never just find time or have time. You have to make that time. Stephen King once famously said, I write every day except my birthday and Christmas. And then years later he came back and he said, okay, fine, I lied. I write on my birthday and Christmas too. And that is an extreme dedication and that's how he can write so many books per year. I don't expect you to do that. I don't do that myself. I take my birthday off, okay? I'm eating cake. I'm opening presents. I am not writing books. I'll tell you right, right now. Um, but I do think the point is valid, and, and that is that you have to carve out time to write. Maybe it's not every day, or maybe it's not for an hour a day. Maybe it's 10 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day. Maybe it's on weekends. You can spend every weekend finding some time to write. And, and when you do that, writing becomes easier. I, I compare it to exercise. The first day you have to exercise, it's like awful, right? Like your muscles hurt, you're sore the next day. And you just like think this is the worst thing ever. But if you exercise for a week in a row or two weeks in a row, it starts to get easier. Your body starts adjusting. Your mind starts saying, okay, I know what this exercise thing is and I'm gonna do it and it'll be fine. I will survive, I'm not gonna die. And uh, it gets so much easier. So I think the same thing happens with writing. Your brain gets used to writing and you get it, it's easier for you to sit down at a keyboard and, and, and get some stories out of your brain if you do it regularly. So try to make time to write. That is the first most important thing about getting started. Make it a routine, make it a habit. And also read. I think the best writers are also readers. So carve out some time to read as well. And I'm not just talking school books here. I mean, I know you have to do all your school assignments and those are important, um, but find books that you love. Find books that are like the books you wanna write and devour them. See what authors are doing. The best way you can actually learn things like characterization and plot and all that is not just by videos like this that are actually telling you, but by reading books that have these elements in it that you love and feeling them in your brain as you're reading them and understanding how they unfold. Um, 
so that is a very, very important thing. Write as much as you can and read as much as you can. And that, those are two building blocks to becoming an actual writer. Um, the other thing that helps when you're getting started is to have some idea where you're going. Now there are two types of writers in the world. One is a plotter. That means they have everything planned out in advance. They know at the beginning, middle, and end of their story and book, and they know who their characters are and what's going to happen to them, and every little detail, and they map it out before they even write the first word. I cannot do that. I have tried. Believe me, I have tried. I thought it would be so much easier if I knew everything beforehand, but I can't do it. My brain doesn't work like that. I am more what's called a pantser, and a pantser kind of writes by the seat of their pants, hence the name. And so I start writing, and I kind of have an idea of where I'm going, um, but I discover a lot of the story and about the characters as I go along. So that's also a valid choice. If you find you can't create an entire story in your head before you put it down on paper, that's okay. You can write what's called a rough draft. You've probably heard that term before. So basically what that means is you take the words that are in your head and you vomit them out on the page. I mean, as fast as you can. Don't worry about correct punctuation, uh, spelling, um, paragraphs. You know, if the words are any good or make any sense, just get that story out of your head as fast as you can and then have something on the page. And then you don't have to deal with this scary white page anymore. You will have something down. There was a famous author that once said, I can always edit a bad page. I can't edit a blank page. So just remember that your first draft does not have to be perfect. In fact, it shouldn't be perfect. It wouldn't, it would never be perfect. Um, half of writing is rewriting. I rewrite my stuff over and over again. Maybe even 75% of my writing is rewriting. And so just getting that first draft on paper will have you so much ahead of the game. And then you can go back and then you can finesse it and you can create, you know, beautiful sentences and you can mold your characters and you can fix the plot line, but you have something to work with. So if you feel like you're better off writing from the seat of your pants and just getting it out there, I encourage you to do that vomit draft and, uh, you know, start that way. Now I do have a warning about that kind of writing though. If you're one of those people who have a shiny idea and you write part of it and then you get bored halfway through and you don't know where you're going and then you have another shiny better idea and you start that story and you get halfway through and you get bored or you don't know where you're going and then, and, you know, and then it repeats and repeats and repeats, um, you need an outline. You are not going to get through this book alone. Uh, so what I would suggest is you to step back and think about your entire story. Maybe you are a plotter and you don't realize it. And you need to write your beginning, your middle, and end, and know where you're going. Think of it as a road map. You're going to California or you're going to Boston or whatever area of the country you're in. Um, you have to know your endpoint. You can take the scenic way. You can go all the way up to Montana and then down to Disney World and then up, you know, to Boston and get there just fine. And you can take crazy twists and turns in your story too. But as long as you know where you're going, you're not going to get lost in the middle because you have a destination and that will absolutely help you. So if you're the type of person who starts stories and never finishes them, consider an outline of your story. I know it's not as fun as writing like the actual story, but I swear it will help you and you're going to feel so much more accomplished when you finish something finally. Take it from me. I used to do this for years. I would always start stories and I would never finish them. And when I finally was able to finish one, oh my gosh, it was like the best feeling ever. And I want you guys to feel that way too. All right, I think I babbled on long enough. Thank you so much for listening to my first episode. There's going to be lots more to come. In the meantime, I have an assignment for you if you choose to accept it. Um, I want you, if you think you are a plotter, I want you to write down a beginning, middle, and end of a story idea. And if you're a pantser, I challenge you to write the first paragraph of your story and just see how it goes without worrying about grammar or punctuation and good sentences or spelling. Just get it from your brain and onto the paper. And if you don't know what you are, try it both ways. I know that's double the work. I'm so mean, right? Um, but try it both ways and see which one makes you happy. And then maybe you can discover something about yourself and what kind of writer you are. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you at the next episode of the Once and Future Writers Club. Oh, the habits of my heart, I